Hey there, Sam. Let's look at how we can authorize a user to join a channel. As I mentioned in a few lessons ago, we will need to use either a private channel or a presence channel if we want to implement authorization. Let's start by changing the channel of our chat message event. Currently, it's on a public channel, so I'll change the class name to private channel instead, and also refactor our channel name. Next, we'll need to define the authorization logic for our newly created private channel. We'll go to channel.php that lives inside the routes folder, and we'll define the new channel in here. We will call the channel method from the broadcast facade, and the first argument will be our channel name, which will be private chart and an ID. The second argument is a callback function that takes in the current login user as the first argument. And the second argument is the ID placeholder that we have in our channel name. And in the callback function, we'll return a condition where it will determine if the user is allowed to join the channel or not. For now, I'll just return true just for demonstration. And that means to always let the current login user join our channel without any extra conditions. Now also note that if our website visitor is not logged into our app, they cannot join a private channel. By default, if someone wants to join a private or presence channel, Laravel will authenticate them using the default authentication guard, which was defined in an auth config file. And if you want to have a final control on a per channel level, you could pass in a third argument in a channel function where you define the guards that you want to apply to authenticate the user. But 90% of the time, you don't really need to touch this option. Anyway, let's test our code. We'll go back to our app.js and subscribe to the private channel instead of the public channel. Now, instead of calling the channel method, we should call the private method to connect to a private channel. And now we'll go to our browser and we see a 403 error coming from a post request sending to the broadcasting of endpoint. This is the HTTP handshake that I mentioned in the previous lessons. So the client attempted to establish a connection with the server, but got rejected by the server because we're not logged in because of the default authentication guards that Laravel has attached to the channel. To fix this error, we first need to log in before we subscribe to the channel. And we'll copy and paste the login logic that we have created in a several episodes ago from the app blade file. And then we'll move our channel subscription logic after we have logged in. And now let's go to our browser, hit refresh, and we no longer see errors. And that means we have successfully subscribed to the private channel. And now let's see what will happen if we return false in the authorization callback function. Let's go back to our browser, hit refresh, and we see the 403 error again on the broadcasting of endpoint. And that means the handshake is rejected. We definitely don't want that. So let's change it back to true. All right, let's move on. I would like to display the author of each message in the DOM as well. And that means every time when we emit the chat message event, we should also attach the current login user in the event. So let's go to our chat message post endpoint and we'll pass in an instance of the current login user to the event constructor. And within the event class, we'll set the user as the class property and attach the user in the event payload. We don't want to attach every information about a user inside the event payload, so we'll just put in the name and email field. Okay, now let's test our code. Let's go back to the browser and send a message. And in the console, the event payload that we received contains the user email and name. And we can certainly make use of the information inside the event payload to make our UI better. Let's do that. And I'm going to turn on my 10x speed boost life hack to code faster. I would also like to put in all the people who are online in this chat room in the nav bar. I'll put in some placeholder avatar for now.
And there we go. We've got a nicely styled template to work on now. We just need to populate the data into our DOM. First of all, let's clear our hard-coded data and we will modify our list item creation in JavaScript. I'll copy one of the hard-coded block and paste it inside our app.js as a reference. And I'll go ahead and replicate the structure in JavaScript. And we'll go to our browser and test it. And it works. And now I'll open a new browser window and test if it is working as expected. And it works great. And now the next thing that we need to do is to put all the online users on the nav bar. And that means we need to keep track on who's entering the channel and who's exiting the channel. Unfortunately, this is not something that a private channel can easily achieve. So instead, we need to use a presence channel. And just a quick recap, the difference between a private channel and a presence channel is that a presence channel is aware of all the users that's currently in the channel. I'll show you what I mean. First of all, let's change the channel that the chat message event will broadcast to, to a new presence channel. And I'll go to channel.php and refactor the authorization logic. In a private channel, we need to return a boolean in the authorization callback function. However, in a presence channel, we will need to return the authorized user. So if we decide to let the login user to join the channel, we should return the user instance. Otherwise, we don't need to return anything in a callback function. And now let's go to our app.js. To subscribe to a presence channel, we'll need to call the join method on echo instead of the private function. And now we'll have access to a few more API. In a presence channel, the function to define the onSubscribe hook is called here instead of subscribed. And the callback function accepts an argument which represent an array of all the users who are currently in the channel. So later on, we'll be populating every one of these users into our navbar. We also have another method called joining, which will be triggered whenever there's a new user join the channel. And also a leaving method, which will be called when a user leaves the channel. All right, let's give this bad boy a test run. And upon reloading our browser, we can see that the user array is printed out when we subscribe to the channel. But when I refresh the second browser window, we are not seeing the joining method being called. And that's because currently we're logged in as the same user. I'll quickly make a login form so we can log in as other users. All right, our form is ready. I'll log in as the first user and the second user in a private window. All right, as you can see, as the second user logs in, the console is printing out the newly joined user information, which is what we return in a channels.php callback function. And now, if user number two tries to exit the chat room, we'll see the leaving callback function got triggered as well. So that means our presence channel callbacks are registered correctly. And now let's polish our code so that we'll show all the online user in an F bar. I'll create an empty array to store all the online users and when the here function is called, I'll reset this array to be the users currently in a channel. And I'll also create the helper function called render avatars, which will simply loop through all the users online and generate an avatar for each of them and append it into the navbar. Let's give this a go. And it's working but I forgot to put in the initials inside the avatar. I'll create a helper function to retrieve the user initials. And put the initials within the avatar. Let's try again. And it's working great. And now let's write the logic for the leaving and joining callbacks. So when a user has joined the channel, we will add the user to our users online array and re-render the avatars. And when a user is leaving the channel, we will filter out the user from the user's online array and again, re-render the avatars. All right, let's run this bad boy for another time. We'll log in the first user. And the second user. And we see both users' initials are popping up in the navbar. Great. And we'll send a message on behalf of each user and they are showing correctly in the chat box. Wonderful. And now if the second user is leaving, the user's avatar in the navbar disappears. Great. Our app is working as we expected. 
And one last thing, I would like to show a divider whenever someone joins the room or exits the room. Let's refactor our code. I'll create a helper function to generate a new text box in the app. And the function body is pretty much what we have done in the event listener for the chat message event. So I'll cut and paste it and modify it accordingly. And now when a user joins or leaves the channel, I would also like to add a new chat message to notify everyone in the room about it. All right, let's test our code. We'll log in as the first user and second user in the private window. And upon logging in, we see the message the second user has joined the room in our first browser window. And when the second user leaves the room, we see the message has left the room. Isn't that neat? And now we're still lacking of one feature, which is typical in a chat room. That is, whenever someone is typing a message, I would like to show a typing notification to everyone in the room. We'll talk more about this in the next lesson. Key takeaways for this lesson. Private and presence channel will only allow authenticated user to join in. They use the default off guard to authenticate users. Presence channel keeps tracks of all the subscribing clients, while private channel doesn't. We use the private function in Echo to subscribe to private channel and the join function for presence channel. We need to define an authorization callback in channels.php for private and presence channel. The private channel of callback should return a boolean, while the presence should return the authenticated user instance. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.